Hi there and welcome to Arduino Project 9, the motorised pinwheel. We're actually going to be using two different sets of power for this. Uh, the 9 volt battery is going to charge a motor and then the standard 5 volt, I believe it's 5 volt, just double check, yep, 5 volt which is connecting to the circuit is going to be um, powering the rest of the circuit itself. So the first thing we're going to do, I don't need that piece, uh, the first thing we're going to do is actually make the circuit itself. So let us make a start by attaching the power as we always do. Uh, to 5 volt which is there and then we'll also attach the uh, the ground like so I don't want this to be in the way so let's twist it that way no that's made it worse there we go that's made it a little bit better so there's our power as usual uh, then we're going to connect a button so let's do our actual switch first so we'll put our button, where is it going to go on the board, around about rows 5 to 7. So let's go 5 to 7 just like that. Make sure that is plugged in nicely. And we'll connect that from the uh, power at the top and then to um, digital, out, digital input 2 as well. So let's do power number 5 there to the top. And then we'll get a cable to connect that to digital input 2. So we'll go from number 7, if it'll go in, back round to digital input 2, like so. So that's the button. Uh, then we also want to connect a um, resistor. <coughs> and what, what level of resistor is this? 10 kilo resistor to go from the button back to the ground as well. So we'll get, connect to that between there, which it won't go in, there, and there, slot 10, row 10, and then we'll connect row 10 back to the ground, like so. So that's our button all sorted, so that'll be our input to our motorised spin wheel, uh, and then we're going to connect up the a transistor to a diode uh, to the actual motor itself. I'm not connecting the 9 volt power just yet because I don't want the motor to just start spinning and, and power on itself just in case. So we'll start with the diode here at rows 17, 18 and 19 down here giving ourselves plenty of space for anything else that we want to do with it and we'll attach that to uh, the top of it to uh, digital input or digital output number 9 so we'll attach that at row 17 bring that back round to digital output number 9 like so and then we'll also attach the bottom of it to the uh, ground so we'll go from number 19 across to ground like so and then with the um, with the other end of it with the middle part we're going to bring this onto the other side of the board. So we'll bring that middle part from there to, let's say, row 26 across here, like so. Uh, now the, only, the, the next part is obviously the motor. So the motor, we need to, a diode. We need to bring the negative, the, the uh, actual ground back to itself. That's interesting. We're connecting both of the grounds up. So we'll do that first to get that cable out of the way. Connect ground there to ground there, and then we'll need a, the motor to connect from, let's have a look, it's going from the output of the transistor, like so, in number 26, and into the power of the 9 volt, so we'll put that there, for instance. And then we also need a diode, which is the last little piece, to go from that same row, row 26, uh, across to the power for the 9 volt. So we'll go from here across to here, like so. And that should be our circuit. I'll plug this in now and see if it does anything. I don't actually think it will do anything because it's not got um, any better connectors. This cable isn't actually that good. 
So we'll just plug that in there, and no, it doesn't do anything just yet. So that's our circuit completed. So we'll swap over to the computer now and do the little bit of programming that's required. It's about 16 lines of code, so that's not going to take us long, and then we'll actually test it out. Okay, here we are in the code, let's get cracking. Okay, that's all there is to the code. It's actually ridiculously simple. We're just setting up the pins. Motor pins the output, switch pins the input. Um, we're reading in the switch state of the actual switch pin, and I don't need an underscore there. I don't know why I put that in there. Uh, if the switch state is high, uh, then digital write the motor pin high, else digital write the load motor pin as low. Uh, so that's all there is to that. I will plug in the Arduino now, since it's not actually plugged in, and then hopefully this will upload successfully. So let's get that into the USB port there. Obviously you can hear this, but you can't see it, but plug that into the Arduino, like so, and then we will, where's the right button? Let's verify, let's upload that to the Arduino now. Compiling sketch, upload, and we've uploaded successfully. So we'll switch back over to the camera now and see what we've got. Okay, so here we are back with the circuit, and after struggling to figure out where I'd gone wrong for the past 15 minutes and rewiring the entire thing because this wasn't working, I finally found out that the battery was dead. Switched out the battery, and suddenly, if you can hear that, but it's definitely working now. So if I put this onto here and press this button, there we go, it's making the uh, making the wheel spin, if I can not destroy the circuit while I pick the uh, breadboard up and press that button again. It's a bit hard to see but there you go and the idea is I'm meant to put this on here. I meant to glue a load of stuff to this but uh, I don't really <laughs> oh god <laughs> I just broke it. <laughs> um, I meant to glue the uh, the piece of wood onto the uh, spin wheel itself, but I don't really want to go gluing everything together. So I just managed to make the little bits of wood fly off into one direction. So that is the motorized pinwheel. Everything works perfectly if you have a battery that actually has power in it. So yeah, thank you very much for watching until next time. Bye bye now.